Okay, replicating the Ilford HP5 in Lightroom. Now, before we jump into the editing software and create a preset, first of all, let's talk about the main characteristics of this film. Now, the Ilford HP5 main characteristic is that it has a low contrast if you compare it to other film stocks. You can see that there's loads of information in the shadows, loads of information in the highlights, and therefore we're losing a bit of strength in the whites and also in the blacks on our image. The blacks are completely grayed out and the whites, well, we're not going to have any overexposed parts or pure whites on our image. Now, this is creating a very flat exposure. Now, apart from that, there's not much to say. It is black and white photography, so we're not going to go into detail in colors, but we do have a very nice grain in the background. You can see it in particular in the whites. It's not very distracting. It's not very big, but it is there. So we have to keep that in mind when we jump into the effects tab in Lightroom. Okay, so we have all the information that we need. Now let's jump into Lightroom and start color grading. Okay, great. So here I am in Lightroom. I've selected an image and moved into the develop tab. Now for this tutorial, I'm using Lightroom Classic, but don't worry if you use other versions of Lightroom, whether it be the mobile or the desktop version, it's exactly the same process with the same tools, only that they look a bit different. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is change this image into black and white. Now the straightforward thing to do is just move the saturation slider all the way to minus 100, and there we're stripping away all the colors. However, this isn't how I like to work. I like to use the profiles within Lightroom to change our entire setting into black and white. So you can go up here into profile, Adobe color, just click and gonna move down to Adobe monochrome. You can also select V on your keyboard and you can transition into this profile. Now what happens right here, our image is transformed into black and white, but also notice how some of the tools have changed their aspect. For example, vibrance and saturation, we cannot move them because well, there's no colors. And down here where we have the color mixer with the HSL, now we don't have the hue or the saturation sliders. We only left with the luminance in the colors. So now we have our tools set for editing black and white. Okay, so let's obtain that flat exposure that the Ethode HP5 has. Now the first tools that we have over here, temperature, tint, exposure, and contrast, these four general sliders, I like to leave them at zero and not include them in the preset when we're saving it. So these are the values that I use to compensate maybe if my image is underexposed or overexposed or white balance is off on field. So these four, I like to leave them at zero. For example, right here, you can see that I added 0.35 stops of exposure because this image originally was a bit underexposed, but, but I do not want this 0.35 to be applied into other photos. So that's why I'm not including exposure and contrast into the preset. So instead, we're gonna move down to highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. These are called the basic correction tools. So right here, you can see that the highlights, we're losing a lot of information over here in the background. Notice how what happens if I drag it towards the negatives. You can see how more information starts to appear as I move further down the slider. Now, of course, we do not want to go to the minus 100. This is completely unrealistic. We're losing a lot of the natural contrast of the image. So I'm gonna go maybe halfway to the minus 50. Then the shadows, we're not gonna go down, otherwise we'll lose detail in the dark parts of the image. We can basically see nothing over here. We want to go towards the positives, so more information is creeping in into the shadow. So I'm gonna go with a value around the 69, and as you can see, immediately we have a lot more information in the dark parts of the image compared to our original photo. Whites and blacks, I'm just gonna leave them like that. And remember that exposure and contrast within Lightroom is mainly composed by the basic corrections, but also the presence tab over here and the tone curve that we have over here. All these three tools affect our exposure and contrast. Okay, we're gonna skip the present step for the time being and move down to the tone curve. Now, the tone curve is a very powerful tool that allows us to control the exposure and contrast on our image to create certain looks. It allows us to correct our image as well, and we can even use it to color grade. So for example, if we wanted to add an indigo black and white, we can always go to the blue channel over here, create a point in the middle and just drag it towards the positives. I notice how we're adding this blue shift into our image. Opposite to that, if you want to add a sepia black and white, you can go towards the negatives. So as you can see, we can even play around with some colors when we're editing black and white with the RGB channels. Now for this tutorial, we're not gonna use this. It was just a fun fact. I'm just gonna reset this channel. I'm gonna move to the point tone curve over here. Now, what I'm interested in doing right here is creating a bit more contrast in the lower parts on our image, not throughout the whole range of the shadows, and also fading out those blacks. Remember that we saw that the blacks were completely raised and very grayed out. They're not very punchy. So I'm just going to create a point here in the dark points of the shadows, one higher up. And this one, I'm just going to drag it just below the diagonal, just a bit. And the input is going to be 65 which is the coordinates in the X axis and the output is the vertical axis is just 60. So those are the coordinates if you want to introduce them manually with your numeric keyboard. Now this point over here, 
I'm just gonna drag it below the diagonal as well, just to add a bit more punch into the darkest points on our image with a value of 28 and 25 in the output. Now, this point over here, this one will control the deepest points on our exposure, the blacks. So what I'm interested in doing is putting it up. And as you can see, if I put it up, now the blacks are more grayed out. You can see the difference with the original image, how our blacks are in the grayish tones. Now, this is way too much, of course, maybe a value around the 10, maybe 12% is just maybe enough. You can basically see the difference with the black interface of Lightroom. Here we have blacks and now we have them a bit grayed out, nothing too unnatural. So that's it for the tone curve. Now move up to the presence tab. Now, if you want an in-depth tutorial about the tone curve, link up here to a dedicated video that I did a couple of years ago. Now the presence tab that we have over here, I also like to call it the effects tab because we have texture that well adds or reduces the texture on our image. As you can see, if I zoom in, you can add more texture or take it away, making your image a bit blunt. Clarity that adds contrast into midtones. So it creates a very dramatic image or a very soft image. And then we have the haze that, well, reduces the haze on our image or adds a simulated effect of mist. So what I'm interested in doing right here in the presence tab is just reducing a bit of the qualities that this digital image has. This image was shot with a 33 megapixel sensor in a very fast telephoto lens. So that's why we have a tad sharp image, way too sharp to be considered film photography. And back in the day, the lenses weren't as sharp, they weren't as contrasty, and they didn't have the coatings that lenses have right now to reduce glaring. So what I'm gonna do is just try to mimic a bit of the effects of the old cameras. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, texture, I'm just gonna reduce it, not towards the minus 100, this is ridiculous, but just reduce it just a bit around the minus 25s. The clarity, I'm just gonna do the same, just to make the image a tad less contrasty in the details. And then the haze towards the negatives will add this simulated mist effect around highlights similar to the halation effect so as you can see towards the negatives notice how our image completely washes out so this is too much but maybe around the minus 20 minus 18 is just gonna be enough so these are the values that i'm gonna use guys just a reminder that you don't have to go with the exact values that i selected over here you can maybe play around maybe you want a lighter effect or you want the contrast back you just reset the values on the presence tab now one thing is missing is all the way down in the effects tab we have grain now, of course, the grain was quite small, but it was there. So I'm just going to zoom in just a bit to see what we were looking at. And we have a very nice and fine noise right here, which isn't enough. So I'm just going to add some quantity in the grain or amount. Not too much, maybe around the 20%. Now we can see it, but we're zoomed in. If you zoom out, it's not very noticeable. So I'm just going to change the size just a bit, maybe around the 40s. And then we have a very nice size. And we can basically observe it if we zoom out, but it's not too distracting. I think we did quite a good job. So this is the before and after. This is our original image. And now we have a very flat exposure with loads of information in the shadows, loads of information in the highlights and the simulated film look effect. So let's save the preset and briefly just check out how it performs in a couple of other images to see if it works or if we need to modify it. Now to save a preset, we're gonna to go to the left panel over here. On the preset, select the plus sign, create a preset and right here, we want to name it and mark only mark all the tools that we used. So for example, we didn't use white balance exposure and contrast. We didn't use detail over here. We didn't use color grading. We didn't use lens correction or transform. So we're not going to mark them. So let's test it out in this image of this man in the gondola in Venice. So let's apply the preset HP5. And there we have our difference. Notice how we had a very contrasty image. And right here we have a bit more information in the shadows. Not too much, not completely flat but it's very nice. Also, the highlights are a lot more preserved. We don't have any overexposure and we have a very nice film ring. I think we did quite a good job. So right here, we have this image of my dogs in the forest. And right here, I have the Ilford HP5 applied. As you can see, I've added it into the Electris Pack B3 and the Analog Preset Pack. But this is the, the image, the final result. What happens if I reduce the amount to the minus 100? This is our black and white photography straight converted from this image. And as you can see, it's very punchy, very contrasty. And we're losing some detail in the highlights, but also some detail in the shadows. But once we apply the preset to its default value, you can notice how the image is very flat compared to the original. We're having a lot more information in the shadows and the highlights are very well preserved. So there you have the Ilford HP5 applied into digital photography. Now, if you want to check out the analog preset pack that contains this preset, link up here if you want to check it out. And also the analog preset pack that contains all the analog styles or film looks that we've analyzed throughout the years. So if you can't support me in that manner, I'd be very thankful.
If you like the short clip and you're interested in watching the full tutorial, check the video that's appearing on screen right here. And if you want to edit in a faster manner, whether it be photo or video, you can check out my preset on Lot Shop right here. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.